Hey everybody, Stefan Zeltzer here. I was thinking to myself, what are the financial steps that I wish I would have started sooner? Steps that, had I taken them years ago, they really would have helped me solidify my financial grounding right now. And I thought about it and I came up with the following four steps. And I would encourage you, if you know anybody who's between the age of 25 and 35, share these steps with them because if they get started on these steps sooner, it'll really provide them with a solid foundation for the rest of their financial lives. So let's go. Step number one is budgeting. Now, when I say budgeting, I know I gotta be careful because some people think budgeting is like a foul word to use. And when some people hear the word budgeting, they envision a parental figure wagging their finger and saying, you may not spend more than this amount of money. That's not what I mean by budgeting at all. By budgeting, I just mean get a list of what your expenses are and also what your income is. And the purpose of that list is not to set limits that you're only allowed to spend this and not allowed to spend that. It's not to wag a finger either. The purpose of that list is just to develop a consciousness and awareness of what it really costs to live and what's going on in your financial life right now. That's step number one. Step number two, setting goals. So you are where you are right now, but where do you want to be? What needs to happen in your life for you to feel that you're heading in the right direction and doing things the correct way? Start thinking about what your goals are. Do you have a goal to buy a house? Do you have a goal to hang out with your, with your friends and family however often? Just try to envision yourself. What are your financial goals? And by knowing what your goals are, now you have established your destination, your point B. Step number three, automated savings. And when I say automated, I mean automated. You're out of the picture. You just set it and forget it. It happens automatically. When you're working, money comes into your account and the account automatically sends money over to either an IRA or to a, uh, a certain stock purchase program or to your 401k, whatever it happens, it happens without you needing to think it through. Because if you had to think through every time you made an investment decision, you'd drag your, thing, your feet, you'd second guess yourself, it wouldn't happen. So automate your savings. The fourth step, leveraging real estate. Now, I know that this is not for the faint of heart, but I would encourage the young people to get into real estate as quickly as possible and leverage it, meaning use other people's money to make you money. Your own money, you have limited resources, you're young. It's not so easy to build a tremendous net worth with just your own resources. But when you learn the power of leveraging other people's money, that'll really accelerate the growth of your net worth. So let's talk about how to leverage real estate. Buying real estate should be one of your first goals. And when you buy that property, have in mind the following. This will not be your permanent abode. Don't buy the property thinking that that's gonna be your place forevermore and there you're gonna live happily ever after. Do not think that way. Buy that property thinking that you will live in this property just temporarily and you eventually will move from this property and convert this property into a rental property. When you convert that property into a rental property, then you will start seeing the major benefits of owning real estate. Number one, you'll have hopefully positive cash flow from that rental meaning that the rent that your tenant pays you will hopefully be more than enough to cover your expenses and then some, giving you positive cash flow. Number two is that their rent that they're paying you is helping you pay down your mortgage. And so your principal gets reduced, 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 which means that your equity in a home gets increased, increased, increased. That means somebody else's money is helping you build equity in your home. Perfect. Four, because you own this real estate, the property hopefully will appreciate in value. And so what that means is that you have this asset which you leveraged and that asset appreciates. Any bit of appreciation is building your equity, is building your net worth. And then, of course, who could, for, who could forget the benefits of depreciation? One of the unknown, but not, not so well known, tax benefits of owning real estate is that you're able to write off depreciation on that property every year, saving you a lot of money in taxes. 
tremendous benefits of owning real estate. So let's summarize. Number one, budgeting. Know where you are right now. Number two, set goals for yourself. Between those two points, point A and point B, you will develop a tremendous financial consciousness. Number three, automate your savings. It just happens autopilot. Get out of your own way. Number four, leverage other people's money and get yourself into real estate and start enjoying all those benefits of, of real estate ownership. All four of those combined will set you on such a solid foundation. It'll help you not just many years down the road, it'll even help you in the near term. You'll see your financial life stabilizing and you'll feel good and confident and you'll know that you're on the right path. If you're looking for a program to help you get started putting all these things together, contact me and we will make it happen.